book by the Chinese revolutionary Mao Zedong. A single spark, Mao wrote, can start a prairie fire. Mao knew little of America, but he knew brutal truths about politics. Living in Washington in the years of Donald Trump, I often thought about that image of a landscape primed to burn. Sometimes it felt like metaphor, and sometimes it felt like fact. But eventually I came to understand it as something else, a parable for a time in American history when the land and the people seemed to be mirroring the rage of the other. I wanted to understand how that time had come to be and what it would leave behind. Americans are among the world's most restless people. In the 1950s, a fifth of the American population picked up and moved each year in pursuit of a spouse or a job or a backyard in the suburbs. My own family followed that path. My father came to America in 1944 as a refugee. He had been born in India to Jewish parents who were fleeing the Nazis' invasion of Poland. My mother was born in Morocco to American diplomats from Chicago. During the Vietnam War, my parents met in Saigon, where my mother worked in the office of a nonprofit group and my father was a newspaper reporter. When they returned to get married, the occasion had an American eclecticism about it. A Jew born in India and a wasp born in Morocco exchanging vows at a courthouse in Michigan. I left the United States a little over a year after the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. The country was preparing to go to war in Iraq, and I reported from Baghdad, Cairo, and elsewhere in the Middle East. A few years later, I settled in Beijing, where I met Sarah Beth Berman from Massachusetts, who had gone abroad as a young producer of theater and dance. We married and eventually prepared to go home. If we stayed abroad too long, Sarah Beth said, we would find it hard to go back at all. It was 2013, and we made plans to move to Washington. In our years abroad, we had witnessed the global response to Barack Obama's election, euphoric in some places, wary in others, but we knew less about what his victory meant to Americans. I had watched election returns on television at an event in 2008, surrounded by curious Chinese spectators. The prospect of America's first black president conveyed an infectious sense of potential particularly for people who recalled that the United States had once barred them under the Chinese Exclusion Act. When Obama won, Wang Chong, a Chinese newspaper reporter standing near me, let out a quiet whoop of celebration. Ethnic discrimination exists very deeply in Chinese minds, he said. Coming home always holds the promise of a new way of seeing. In the 1940s, after covering the war in Europe, the author John Gunther returned to America. At times, he felt like the man from Mars, he wrote, in Inside USA, published in 1947. In Gunther's case, some features of his home unnerved him. The segregation of the South out-ghettos anything I ever saw in a European ghetto, even in Warsaw, he wrote. But other encounters thrilled him. On his travels across the country, he took to asking people, what do you believe in most? He was told, work, children, Thomas Jefferson, God, the golden rule, the Pythagorean theorem, a high tariff, a low tariff, better agricultural prices, happiness, good roads, and Santa Claus. But the most frequent response was, as he put it, the people, if you give them an even break. Sarah Beth and I landed at Dulles International Airport on July 7, 2013. At passport control, I picked up a brochure with the title, Welcome to the United States. It was published by the Bureau of Customs and Border Protection, and it had a cover photo of the Washington Monument and cherry trees in bloom. The brochure began, We are glad that you decided to travel to the United States to visit, study, work, or stay. For a few weeks, we stayed at my in-law's house on a quiet street in the Washington suburbs. It was a stark change from an alleyway in Beijing, where traveling merchants shouted offers to sharpen your kitchen knives or tell your fortune or buy your hair for a wig factory. On Craigslist, we found a row house to rent in Washington, and we savored the minor luxuries we had missed in China. Potable tap water, clean air, a dishwasher. 
in the city.